morning. study <clears throat> starting to, like, it's, it's a little bit too chilly to walk and I don't want to leave my kids in here so I'm sitting out on my balcony I'm reading my bible and reflecting yesterday morning it's so God is so uh, just amazing and unbelievable like the, the live stream that I did yesterday morning before I got my kids off to school I, I had no idea that that was a prophetic word um, for me and not even just for me there's other people have um, gone through the same testing and trials over the last several years and you know when I was talking about for those of you who were on with me yesterday morning when I was talking about how sometimes God has to prepare us for even telling us what our calling is or he has to prepare us for information that he needs to give us right like we're not even equipped to handle certain things that we think we want to know and he was making I was ministering to myself unknowingly because a few hours after that live stream the Lord dumped a doozy of, of revelation on me about uh, the last several years and it literally brought so many made so many things that didn't make sense make sense but if I had received that information last year or the year before, it probably would have destroyed me and definitely would have destroyed my family. Um, and the crazy thing is, it would have destroyed me last year, but this year it gave, it made me excited. Like it was actually, it, on the surface it seemed like bad news, but it really was really great news. And I know y'all don't know what I'm talking about, but. post that I just put up a little while ago um, is for everyone who has been suffering from Jezebel's reign. Um, and here's the interesting thing about Jezebel. She actually didn't have a lot of power, but she had a lot of influence. What, it, what do I mean by that? Most of the stuff she did, she did through her husband's power, who was the king. She was in the shadows, manipulating things and people. She was very influential. She knew how to persuade people. She was narciss She was a narcissist. She was a witch. She was very smart. And... She did things, you know, with, and made other people take the fall for her. You know what I mean? Like, she just was not, she was wicked. And when God got fed up with her shenanigans, very cunning, yeah. But she did it, like, she did stuff in hiding. And she, she said, like, oh, she was very cunning. Um. But when God got fed up, he like God will let people think they're getting away with stuff for a while. She was torturing people for a while through her through King Ahab's power. 
she literally um let's read it let's just go let's just go to the word first kings This is when, when God got tired of him. He got fed up with those two. So, King Ahab, who was her husband, who she loved, I think, um, wanted this plot of land, this vineyard that was next door to, the, to his uh, castle, his palace or whatever. And uh, he went and asked the man to sell it to him or give it to him and he'll give him another piece of land of equal or greater value. But he really wanted this land next to his house to make a vegetable garden. Literally, that's what he wanted to do with it. To use it to make a vegetable garden. The man was like, I can't give it to you. Like this has been, the Lord gave, gave this to my family and it's been passed down from my ancestors. I can't give you this land. So um, Ahab came home pouting. He came home pouting and sullen and and, and Je Jezebel was like, what's wrong with you? He was like, they both won't give me his vineyard. She was like, are you the king or not? Like, you're the king. Take it. You know, she said, just never mind. Eat your dinner. Go to bed. I'll take care of it. Listen to what she did. First Kings 21, starting at verse 8. So she wrote letters in Ahab's name, sealed them with his seal, and sent them to the elders and other leaders of the town where Naboth lived. Listen. You hear that? She wrote a letter in the king's name. She didn't they didn't think that they didn't even realize they were doing what Jezebel wanted. They thought they were doing what the king wanted. You see that? She's behind the scenes manipulating stuff. If she'd have wrote Jezebel, it wouldn't have had the same pool. They would probably wouldn't have listened, right? So she wrote letters in Ahab's name, sealed them with his seal, and sent them to the elders and other leaders of the town where Naboth lived. In her letter, she commanded, call the citizens together for fasting and prayer. Listen, just because someone says, uh, Jesus that say they fasting, talk, they're having a prayer call. There's a lot of people who have prayer calls weekly and they are witches, okay? Just like Jezebel, you see that? In her letter, she commanded, call the citizens together for fasting and prayer and give Naboth a place of honor. So she tricked Naboth into showing up. Somebody tried to trick me into showing up to something last month. <sighs> Just never mind. Okay. And then seated two scoundrels across from him. And then see two scoundrels across from him who will accuse him of cursing God and the king. Then take him out and stone him to death. You see that? She used all of this trickery and deception in someone else's name. Someone else was the front. Her husband was the front. It seemed like he set this up, but she set it up. Okay. So the elders and other town leaders followed the instructions Jezebel had written in the letters. They called for a fast and put Naboth at a prominent place before the people. Then the two scoundrels came and sat down across from him and they accused him of cursing. Oh, here come Milo Rose, Lord, and it's cold out here. Hold on one second. I'm going to give y'all a little bit of you for a second. back y'all okay sorry about that she's like mommy I need my swimsuit and we need to go make sand castles meanwhile it's 40 degrees it's 40 something it's gonna get up in this to 70 but it's cold right now but um she was all yesterday when we was coming here take me to the beach <laughs> take me to the beach so anyway let me get back at this before she come back okay so she tricked 
everybody. And she used the keywords to make people actually think she was doing something godly while she was literally plotting someone's death in her husband's name. Well, this was the, it all went down exactly how she planned it. The man was killed. She came home. Um, so we're going to jump down to verse 15 in chapter 21 of 1 Kings. When Jezebel heard the news, she said to Ahab, you know the vineyard Naboth wouldn't sell you? Well, you can have it now. He's dead. So Ahab immediately went down to the vineyard of Naboth to claim it. Okay, we're about to jump down to when the Lord uh, let them know what was going to happen. But the Lord said to Elijah, go down to meet King Ahab of Israel who rules in Samaria. He will be at Naboth's vineyard in Jezreel, claiming it for himself. Give him this message. This is what the Lord says. Wasn't it enough that you killed Naboth? Must you rob him too? Because you have done this, dogs will lick your blood at the very place where they lick the blood of Naboth. Um, let's go down to verse 20. I have come because you have sold yourself to what is evil in the Lord's sight. So now the Lord says, I will bring disaster on you and consume you. I will destroy every one of your male descendants, slave and free alike, anywhere in Israel. I am going to destroy your family as I did the family of Jeroboam, son of Nabat, and the family of Basha, son of Ahijah. For you have made me very angry and have led Israel to sin. So listen, Jezebel, you know, her kids is Ahab's kids. Okay. So her wicked deeds led to the demise of of her children so if you are moving like Jezebel right now you're putting you're cursing your own kids not just you he took and listen verse 23 and regarding Jezebel the Lord says dogs will eat Jezebel's body at the plot of land in Jezreel now the most of the wrath came down on the men of the family except Jezebel she was the only woman that he was like yeah we're gonna just take her out and I'm gonna let the dogs eat her she reigned and terrorized his prophets she killed a bunch of prophets of the Lord she treated people like they were disposable and dispensable and worthless and it seemed like she was getting away with it for a while but listen to me recompense comes the lord always handles stuff he he'll you be chilling and thinking you living on top of the world one day and the next day he handled you here's the good news we have jesus even if you've been functioning fully in the jezebel spirit for decades you can if you sincerely turn your life over to god and confess the jesus as your lord and savior you literally can be saved from a life of wickedness he can do you just like he did saul on the road to damascus saul killed so many um jews he was killing them left and right killing them and the lord converted him over all the way up until the last second you can turn this turn this thing around but if not recompense is coming let's let's see how this ended for jezebel Second Kings chapter nine. He anointed someone, Jehu, who was actually uh, underneath like them. Like Jehu was Jehoshaphat's son who was um, Jehoshaphat was Ahab's friend. And I think Jehoshaphat ruled over Judah or something. But Jehu was uh, anointed king and God gave him the instruction to go and take out Ahab's family. Ahab was already dead at this point. But his sons, all his sons were still alive and Jezebel was still kicking. Okay. So he like, it's time. Second Kings chapter 9 verse 30. When Jezebel, the queen mother, heard that Jehu had come to Jezreel... Now, at this point, Jehu had already killed all his sons. He killed all of them. He was often everybody attached to Ahab. He killed all of these people. Now, he was coming for Jezebel now. When Jezebel, the queen mother, heard that Jehu had come to Jezreel, listen to what she did. She painted her eyelids and fixed her hair and sat at a window. I had a dream this summer 
that when I had the dream, it made absolutely no sense to me. But it, but it left an impression on my spirit and I wrote it down. I didn't know what it meant. There was a person in this dream that I knew very well. We no longer are in communication, but I knew this person really well. And we didn't have an official falling out or anything like that. We just stopped talking one day. Like literally, it was literally just like one day we just stopped talking. And, I, and this person was in my dream and she was walking down, she was walking down the street, like a sidewalk. And she looked, she was pregnant, but not with a baby. Like it was like this big balloon was, was like on her belly and it was clear and it was filled to the max. You know how when you, like when you fill up a balloon with too much air and it looks, and it's, and, it, and one more air molecule and it's going to pop. And the balloon was clear, you could see through it, and it was stuff in there, and it was water in there. And I remember thinking, oh my God, it's gonna pop. It's gonna explode. And she was all dressed up, heels on, uh, makeup, um, her hair was real pretty. Like she was all dolled up, and she was just walking like nothing was wrong. And I was like, oh my God, that thing is gonna explode. It's gonna explode like her belly's about to pop. But it was a balloon, right? And then all of a sudden, it popped and she was on the ground she was just laying on the ground like helpless and I woke up and I was like why did I what was that yesterday the Lord told me what it was child and it brought me to this that's why I'm on this Jezebel kick because I was thinking about this all day yesterday um when Jezebel the queen mother heard that Jehu had come to Jezreel she painted her eyelids and fixed her hair and sat out a window she ended up splat on the ground uh, it was a spirit literally she ended up on the ground listen let's keep going uh, when Jehu entered the gate of the palace she shouted at him have you come in peace you murderer you're just like Zimri who murdered his master Jehu looked up and saw her at the window and shouted who was on my side and two or three eunuchs looked out at him Throw her down, Jehu yelled. So they threw her out the window and her blood spattered against the wall and on the horses and, Jeh and Jehu trampled her body under his horse's hooves. Then Jehu went into the palace and ate and drank. Afterward, he said, someone go and bury this cursed woman for she is the daughter of a king. But when they went out to bury her, they found only her skull, her feet and her hands. When they returned and told Jehu, he stated, this fulfills the message from the Lord which he spoke through his servant Elijah from Tishbe at the plot of land in Jezreel. Dogs will eat Jezebel's body. Her remains will be scattered like dung on the plot of land in Jezreel so that no one will be able to recognize her. Jezebel tormented people. She tore up families for her own wicked whatever. She, she killed God's prophets. Like, she was a bully. She hid in the shadows. She used other people's uh, power and names and faces to get her wicked plans off. This is what's happening on in the world. Like, like this is what's happening right now in the world. You guys remember this word, okay? Remember it because this is what's happening in the world. But listen, Jezebel has been tormenting individual families and she has been tormenting nations. That spirit has literally been moving. You hear me? Moving for years, setting up these wicked plots. But with the time of recompense has come. The time of recompense has come. Listen, fall in line with, fall in line with God's will. If you have been manipulating people to get what you want, I don't care how justified you think you are. Manipulating of other people is witchcraft. Listen. Get in line with God's plan. Surrender to the Lord. Fix it. Because it's about to go down. It's about to be splat on the ground. And the Lord used a person who people didn't suspect 
to ultimately bring down it bring it all down and just remember this if nothing else if you're into sketchy stuff destroying people's families um obsessed with money and will do anything to get it and you think it's funny um just know that you're literally digging a pit for your kids because Ahab's nowhere in here to just say his kids did anything. But the wor the order from the Lord was take out everybody, all his kids. So when you do crazy stuff, you are literally submitting your children to live out the um, the sentence that God has set for you. Listen, it's in Exodus chapter 30. This ain't just me talking. This is biblical principle and law. Exodus 34, 7. Exodus 34, 7. I lavish unfailing love to a thousand generations. I forgive iniquity, rebellion, and sin. He said, I'll forgive you. But I do not excuse the guilty. I'll forgive you, but I, some, somebody got to pay, okay? He's a just guy, okay? But I do not excuse the guilty. I lay the sins of the parents upon their children and grandchildren. The entire family is affected, even children in the third and fourth generations. Not only are you uh, tearing up the faith, fate of your children, but you're doing it for your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, your great-great-grandchildren. And for you wicked women and your men don't know that you're wicked, notice Jezebel is the one who actually put this man's murder in play, right? Ahab knew nothing of it. He was at home eating and sleeping, okay? She put this whole plan in play and the Lord sent the prophet to Ahab and said, you killed Nabal, even though his wife did it. So when you run around doing your wicked stuff, and the Lord killed Ahab before he had, had Ahab killed before Jezebel got killed. Why? Because his power was what she was using to do the dirt. So he removed her source of power. Then he took her out. She watched, She had to watch her husband get killed. She had to watch her kids get killed. Then he sent somebody to kill her. Then he sent somebody to kill her. Listen here, wicked women. <laughs> Listen. Ezekiel. It's going to come back and get you. Good morning, baby boy. You like the what? I like the Yeah, it's beautiful. I like the I know. It was kind of, was kind of creepy last night. Is my mom back to sleep? Turn on the TV for us so she don't interrupt my mommy's Bible study. Okay. Ezekiel chapter 13. Starting at verse. Uh, I'm going to start at 17. Okay. 13, 17. Now, son of man, speak out against the women who prophesy from their own imaginations. This is what the sovereign Lord says. What sorrow awaits you women who are ensnaring the souls of my people young and old alike. You tie magic charms on their wrists and furnish them with magic veils. Do you think you can trap others without bringing destruction on yourselves? You see how she had trapped Nabal? She trapped him. She tricked him. Okay? He said, um, you bring shame on me among my people for a few handfuls of barley or a piece of bread. She did it for a vineyard. Okay? By lying to my people who love to listen to lies, you kill those who should not die. And you promise life to those who should not live. This is what the sovereign Lord says. I am against all your magic charms, which you use to ensnare my people like birds. This is witchcraft, right? This is what they're describing here in this Bible. Witchcraft is real and it's alive and well. There are so many men under bewitchment of wicked women. This is, he talking to y'all, whoever doing that. And some of them on here, he talk, this is for you. You can set yourself free, honey. Uh, repent. Repent. I will tear them from your arms 
setting my people free like birds set free from a cage. Guess what? These men are going to be set free from these Jezebels. I will tear off the magic veils and save my people from your grasp. They will no longer be your victims. Then you will know that I am the Lord. You have discouraged the righteous with your lies, but I didn't want them to be sad. And you have encouraged the wicked by promising them life, even though they continue in their sins. When Jezebel killed all of um, the Lord's prophets and then got her fake prophets of Baal and told them all, you know, made it seem like they were all the good ones. They all got killed too, child. Jehu took everybody out. And you have encouraged the wicked by promising them life, even though they continue in their sins. Because of all this, you will no longer talk of seeing visions that you never saw, nor will you make predictions. For I will rescue my people from your grasp. Then you will know that I am the Lord. I got one more thing I'm going to read y'all. Proverbs 6, 16. There are six things the Lord hates. No seven things he detests. Haughty eyes. A lying tongue. Hands that kill the innocent. A heart that plots evil feet that race to do wrong a false witness who pours out lies a person who sows discord in a family that scripture i was reading a second ago um i tracy 88 was um ezekiel 13 um, I started at verse 20, I think, or 17, 17 or 20. It's in the, the subtitle of that section was like uh, something about women false prophets. Listen, if you are one of these women, the balloon is about to pop, child. Uh, don't, don't, don't be like Jezebel. Like if you realize you have been like Jezebel, like don't keep being like her. Go be like Saul and repent. Ask the Lord to forgive you. Repent. Ask the Lord to forgive you. Turn from your wicked ways before you get thrown over the balcony and splat on the ground and dogs eat. <laughs> Listen, it ain't too late to fix it. And if you have been a victim of this, like if your family has been, or your children, your son, your, um, whoever has been under the magic charms and spells of a Jezebel and you've been feeling helpless in all of this, know that God has watched all of it and the day of recompense is here. You stay in prayer. You start praying to cover them. You know, the, the armor of God, you, you can cover them in a way as a family member, as a mother of one of these people, as the wife of one of these people, you can cover them. In Job, we gonna, I'm going to show y'all some stuff Job did to protect his family, his kids and his wife. Even though his kids end up eventually coming out, but, at, but before, but the Lord is about to, he, he not letting Satan run around with this stuff no more with his, with his people. Where's Job? There is. Job chapter 1. Day of recompense is here. The word of the day is recompense. Recompense. Listen, you pray. You that that Ezekiel, you pull some scriptures out of Ezekiel to anchor your prayers in for your son's release from whoever, whatever wick, wicked witch has have him, has him under bewitchment. You pull some scriptures out. Lord, you said that you would take him from the snare of these people and release him you will set this captive free you start you get in prayer you fast you pray 
You give the Lord's word back to him and say, Lord, you say it. That's what you do. In Job, okay, listen to this. Job 1.1 1, 1 is where I'm going to start. The, there was once a man named Job who lived in the land of Uz. He was blameless, a man of complete integrity. This is what I was talking about yesterday. You have to get your, the way you can help the people you love is getting yourself pure in the eyes of the Lord. You got to get right. You can't be doing this and that, this stuff there. If any plan you have needs you to lie, even a little white lie just to get this or that, you got to clean all of that up, okay? Because the reason why Job was able to do so much to protect his was because he was blameless and a man of complete integrity in the eyes of the Lord. He feared God and stayed away from evil. He had seven sons and three daughters. He owned 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 teams of oxen, and 500 female donkeys. He also had many servants. He was, in fact, the richest person in that entire area. Verse 4. Listen, Job's sons would take turns preparing feasts in their homes, and they would also invite their three sisters to celebrate with them. When these celebrations ended, sometimes after several days, Job would purify his children. Because Job was blameless in the eyes of the Lord, he was able, his kids would basically, his kids would be partying and drinking. And Job, when they would finish, he would go and purify his children. He would get up early in the morning and offer a burnt offering for each of them. For Job said to himself, perhaps my children have sinned and have cursed God in their hearts. This was Job's regular practice. He was covering his kids and it was working because Job was blameless in the eyes of the Lord. You got to get yourself right and you got more power. The power is in your purity as a Christian. Okay, so listen, down to verse 6. One day the members of the heavenly court came to present themselves before the Lord, and the accuser, Satan, came with them. Where have you come from, the Lord asked Satan. Satan answered the Lord, I have been patrolling the earth, watching everything that's going on. Satan was, he, he walks around looking for an opening to get you. And once he finds one, he come up to the Lord and be like, can I do this to him? He can't do nothing to you without God allowing it. So if bad stuff is happening to you, you got stuff to clean up. Okay? Then the Lord asked Satan, have you noticed my servant Job? He is the finest man in all the earth. He is blameless. A man of complete integrity. He fears God and stays away from evil. <clears throat> listen to what Satan says. Listen, listen. Satan replied to the Lord, yes, but Job has good reason to fear God. You have always put a wall of protection around him and his home and his property. The Lord put a wall of protection around Job. Because Job was blameless and he feared God and he had integrity. He's like, well, reach out and take everything he has and he will surely curse you to your face. And the Lord said, all right, you can test him. Do whatever you want with everything he possesses, but don't harm him physically. Here's, the, here's what I want you to see. If this is a spouse and they done lost their mind, they gone to Jezebel that took them off into the sunset and you like this man and lost it. After the Lord, after the Lord allowed Satan to start taking away all Job's stuff to test him, including his children, okay? He didn't get to take his wife. His wife even said, curse God and die. When the, when the Lord put all, let Satan put all the boils on him. And the wife said, said to him, curse God and die. She still didn't die. Why? Because they are one because they're married. So even though she was out of order, she was covered under Job. They were one. So even if this person has lost it because they're under some bewitchment or whatever, you got to stand in the gap. His spouse was untouchable because he was untouchable. Even though she was totally out of order. She literally said, curse God and die. But because the Lord said what a man and woman, a man cleaves to his wife and they are one. So when the Lord says you can't touch Job, he couldn't touch Job's wife either. You have so much power as a spouse of a person who was under bewitchment. And guess what? This goes both ways. This is a, a Jezebel spirit doesn't know gender. Okay. It could be, yo, you, you could be the husband on here and your wife that ran off with some person who got a Jezebel spirit. And you like, what's going on? They're under bewitchment. It said it. It's under their magic charms and spells. They got they got God. Jezebel's reign is coming to an end. The day of recompense is here. Stand in the gap for your children, 
your parents, your brothers, your, your spouse, you stand in the gap. Jezebel about to come down. And if you are Jezebel child, honey, repent, child. Repent, repent, repent. That's all I got to say. That's the, that's the word from the Lord this morning. That's the word from the Lord this morning. I think it's really, like, literally, like, I, I'm not going to tell you all the things that God showed me and told me yesterday. But let me tell you something else. You don't know people. I don't care how much you knew. People live, people be living multiple lives. I mean, you just don't know people. I'm going to leave this up. You don't know people. And so you have to know God because while God was taking me on my journey to prepare me for all the things um, that were coming and where he was taking me and all the things that I've experienced since, you know, he started preparing me, <laughs> I'm grateful for every last thing. It was not fun going through it. But I'm so glad that I'm on my way out. And I'm so grateful that God chose me to be the good character in this Bible story I've been living through for the last seven years. Seven is a year, I mean, is the number of completion. Seven years ago, uh, three weeks ago, it was seven years since a horrific attack on my family started. Um, and it was like I've been I've been running like in fight or flight mode ever since. And 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 this is the year of completion and, and eight is the year of new beginnings. And God is about to walk me and my family into what he had planned for us. Um and all the stuff I went through the last seven years was my was my boot camp and training. And now we war and win. We war and we win. When you're standing on the side of Jesus, when you're on the side of the battle line that Jesus is on, you win. <laughs> you win. So now I'm about to enjoy this beautiful beach with my babies. Um, Bible study is tomorrow. Text 404-905-2512 if you want to be a part of it. We're talking about um, getting the plunder. <laughs> praying and and God told you that he was going to expand your territory. That's war that's war talk, right? You can't you can't occupy territory until you overtake it and get the plunder. So, tomorrow we're talking about setting ourselves up for expansion of our territory. I love y'all so much. Let me let get y'all let y'all get some of this nice view before we part. Go make breakfast for my babies. <clears throat> Those clouds are like a blanket. <laughs> That's the Lord. He's like, I got you. You covered. I got you, Myla. You're covered. All right, y'all. I'll check y'all later. Bye.